welcome to Soccer Heads New England. This is Dave Radigan to my left, Jim Roberti to my right, Paul Nardizzi, and across from me, our engineer, Dale Lawrence. And we're back. We're going to talk about something very important today. It's the World Cup. The World Cup coming up November 20th to December 18th. So let me just say this, boys, before we start anything, we have to cancel your Christmas shopping season or get it in early because once the World Cup starts, all regular, normal routine stuff is going to stop for you guys because you're going to be spending all your time up at crazy hours to listen. What, what time are the games going to be on in Qatar? Well, most World Cups used to do three a day. Yep. But now, because it's condensed, it's going to be four a day. Quite possibly the craziest World Cup ever. And they're going to be different hours. I think it used to be like 9, 12, and 3. Top of my head, I think it's going to be, some of them are going to be early in the morning. You're going to end. How about Eastern after. Standard Time? What time are the like games? Like 3, 6, 9, and noon, something like that. 3, 6, 9, and noon? That's a lot of recording to watch it. Three, Unless six, you want nine, to get up. Noon. But you say it's going to be like a different life. This is what I live anyways. This is it. We, we watch we this stuff in. throughout the week anyways. Yeah. You're so but nothing's going to change. Just, oh, so just, you're saying you're going to be up at that hour? But I always am anyways. You're up early in the morning? To watch when there's a game on. Yeah. What about like, I don't know, jobs, things to do? Well, comedians. They don't don't really have jobs. And I work for the utility company. Yeah. We're, 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 we're ready 24-7, Dave. I know, I know you're ready. I know, I know we're ready 24 7. How often, Paul, how often do you think Jim is ready to watch soccer or just ready for what he's supposed <laughs> to be doing? <laughs> for what he's supposed to be doing. I think Eversource pretty much knows that when soccer's on, yeah. they call someone else. You know, I had a friend who was doing a uh, golf club called Evergreen, and it was a little bit, uh, I don't want to say that it wasn't well kept, but it was never green. Was the uh, was what people in the Sorry, neighborhood mutual called friend? You're talking about, yeah. Okay. So I think now, should we rename Jim's division of EverSource to NeverSource? I like that. <laughs> Only uh, call between the games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, here's one thing you know, Dave. I know you're concerned. You've been concerned since they announced this World Cup. And I just want to confirm to you, it is going to be hot there. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it could have could have been a lot hotter. And this is what makes it so weird. I mean, it's right in the middle of the European season because Qatar, Qatar which is smaller than uh, Connecticut and has a population about the same size as Chicago, is going to be hosting this World Cup. They couldn't do it in the summer because it's so hot there. So instead of being play, played in the summer, it's being played November 20th to December 18th. It's a smaller window, as you mentioned. It's condensed. My uh, prediction for this, by the way, best U.S. showing ever in the World Cup because of these strange circumstances, because they'll benefit more athletic, younger players. I'm, st I'm sticking to that for no good reason, but that's what I'm going with. What do you I think? Mean, I think that is a sensible prediction. Okay. Based on because they're young and it's going to be hot, but because of their talent and the fact that a lot of them aren't, Playing for their teams, I'm going to say that's going to negate your argument, and they're out. Burkhalter? Burkhalter. Braholster. I know that there's been some heat on him. I know they mm -hmm. haven't been great in the friendlies. Perfect time to make a prediction like this, because if I'm wrong, nobody will remember. I but, oh, no, we'll remind you. Let, you <laughs> Let me tell you. And, I, and, and I'll say you're going to be so wrong that I am going to say they are not only not going to win a game, they're probably not going to score a goal. That's my prediction. That's your prediction? Yep. There'll be more... The United States men's national team will score more with women than on the <laughs> pitch over in Qatar. So you're I'll saying you they right won't now. even score a goal and they're going to have a very poor showing of the World Cup. I've they're watched every record. friendly and, and Paul's yelled at me every time. Paul should you know, Stop watching these friendlies. You're wasting your time. But I, I think they got a tough draw this year, to be honest with you. They're going to play, uh, play in England. They're playing Wales. Wales. And Iran. You know, maybe with Iran. Maybe if there's not, you know, some guy with a, a bomb vest, so the game will be completed. <laughs> but uh, other than that, they're not scoring any goals. You know, maybe a nil-nil draw well, that's, ran if they're that's, lucky. I, I just, I've been so disappointed. All right. Well, in this case, I've got two questions for Paul. Paul, first of all, why are you yelling at Jim? You know he's very sensitive. When did I yell at Jim? <laughs> I don't know. He said you yelled at uh, him. It was in a text. Uh, I took it as yelling. You took it as yelling? And he said, stop well, watching I, you know, Yeah, because I watch good soccer, and when he texts me and says, I'm watching this, and I, there's a good game when I get pissed, what are you watching that for? Watching a U.S. scrimmage. 
Remember, the stadium was empty for the damn game. I saw, yes, for most of them they were, but they were just, it was it was embarrassing. And then he tells me he's watching, you know, Liverpool last week. I mean, that game was eight hours ago. Don't tell me you're watching. <laughs> yeah, he got mad at me because I was watching the time delay Liverpool game. He's like, I saw it eight hours ago. Here's my second question. Jim has got a very doom and gloom prediction mm -hmm. for the U.S. team. Would you say that's unpatriotic? Would the way say he that says it, be yes. I'm, I'm rooting for them. I'm not too... High on them, but Jim seems to almost be rubbing it in. The no, 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 wait a Almost a, a question where you wonder where his checks are coming from. <laughs> I was, you almost yeah. wonder if he's getting some checks from somewhere to, uh, you know. You wonder if descent. maybe the Ayatollah is in a poster in his room or something. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe he likes these or, or other countries. Yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be like Joe Biden. I'm trying to be nice to Iran because we need their oil. Uh -huh. I'm trying to same thing. I want Iran to do well. You're comparing yourself to Joe Biden. No. I'm just, <laughs> you. You did have a long ride to get here. I was actually comparing my prediction to your prediction. I think we are in total opposite camps when it comes to the prediction. Well, we are definitely in total opposite camps because the more you talk, the more I think I should be predicting a World Cup win, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to. I'm just going to say the best. Let's defer US to Paul to settle the, ever. Let's settle the argument here. Let's just do this. I just want to point out, here's what we get to talk about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the U.S. national team. We're going to be talking about the Framingham, uh, Framingham State, the update from Framingham State. And I don't know why this is even on our agenda, but we have the Barnstable update. That's exactly right. This <laughs> is very important. Barnstable High School. I don't know. It, it sounds like somebody might be, uh, what, what's the term? Uh, grinding, Bandwagoning a little bit. Bandwagoning or perhaps grinding maybe. an axe. We'll find out. Maybe. maybe. Those, are, those are the big things that we've got here on Soccer Heads New England. Let's go, let's go to this. Let's go to the U.S. national team. So I've made my prediction. He's made his prediction. I mean, what is there going about the national team? And I know it's a, a lot of the criticism has been the coaches taking the players and trying to mold the players into the system instead of creating a system that best fits the strengths of the players. What do you think about I mean, this sounds like typical of the U.S. for every sport in uh, international play. The Stubborn, Olympics, you mean, and the world, conceited? The What's that? Stubborn and conceited. Is that what you mean? System-oriented. I think yeah. a lot of these coaches come in and they're all system oriented. And so there's criticism of them, but it's like, does it really, I mean, you tell me, does it make sense in soccer to have a, have a system and get your players to play the system in a tournament? Or are you better off putting to, uh, players together in a system that best, fit, be, uh, that best fits their skill level for a 30 day tournament? for a team that won't have a lot of practice time together, right? I think it's better to you. If you're hiring a coach, you should be hiring him for his system. Yeah. And then I think along the way, Burhalt has realized some of these guys have really started to slump. So should he just change his system in October? Or so Jim, watch these scrimmages. Yeah. He can't change it now. We've already ingrained the system in them for the last three years. Yeah. So it's just going to be whatever it is. If they can't score... Maybe mid-game some games, maybe he'll tinker with the lineup. But I think you have to, if you've been practicing it for three years, you have to at least go out there and play the Burhalter system. I wouldn't think it would take too much effort. Now, maybe I'm, I'm crazy, but to, to tweak it a little bit here and there to... Tweak it, add, fine, add a little not bit overhaul it. Yeah, tweak right. it a little bit. They did get a couple breaks, okay? So Jim and I are Italian fans. We would love to see Italy in the World Cup. Unbelievable. Okay. Unfortunately, they're not in the World Cup. Yes. However, a little help from Italy. Okay. So Thomas Tuchel, who coached Chelsea, you laughed at that name when I said it yeah. Yeah. a year ago. One of the greatest names ever. Gets in a sideline argument with Conti, a very fiery Italian guy. Okay. I don't Won't think you have to say. Hand. I don't think you have to say a very fiery he, okay. Italian. You can Fair. just say an Italian guy. Okay. We know. Fair. We know. So it's like subsequently. Through, due to the aftermath of this, and it was kind of embarrassing for Tuchel, if you saw the way he acted, he got fired. Yep. The new coach came in and Pulisic. immediately yep. started playing Pulisic. That's a break for us. Then I said that Pulisic was going to struggle against England facing Walker, who's the outside back for City. He's now out for the year with some knee injury. So those are two little tiny breaks. England's your hardest opponent, yep. and now you're facing their backup right back. Mm -hmm. And Pulisic is now going to be informed because the new coach is playing him. We get a couple more breaks like that. A couple more guys stop playing. I'll update my prediction. But right now I'm with Jim. It's not going to be great. And, I, and I, I'm worried about Wales. I've seen Wales play. Wales is good. Yeah. yeah. Wales is, they got a tough bracket, I guess what I'm trying to say. I mean, Iran is the one they're supposed to win, mm -hmm. but they may not even get out of that. But even I, if you look at the FIFA world rankings, you would think that the U.S., you know, they're a top 15. Yeah. 
Yeah. Iran's only like 20th. Yeah, they're not. They're not way down they're on, they're in They're on the, the list at least. You're right. Yeah. They're on the list. Yeah. I've well, never, I don't know who they have. I've never seen them play, but I bet you they're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough bracket. It is. And, and, the, and from the games I've seen, they're not playing well together. They're not playing as a team together. And from what I saw, yeah, they got these players coming in and we have some injuries. There's not a lot of time. Yeah. You're only talking a, a couple of months to get it all, get the, get their stuff together without real games between now and then. All right. Now, let me ask one question just to back up a little bit to what you were saying. When you're saying they'll have a tough time with Wales, you mean the country? Both, Dave. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Hey, by the way, I missed this, and I meant to say this. We have another thing, a story from the news, and I know we're not, we're not doing the wide, wide, wide world of soccer news today, but we've got this crazy story out of Texas. And I, I meant to get that to that in the rundown, but I have trouble reading my own writing. So you want to go to Framingham State Update first, or do you want to go to the U Texas Permian? Fill me in on the, oh, Permian. That's a football school. That's a big football. That's school. Friday Night Lights. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. The U Texas Permian Basin. Permian is either the school it's based on or that's their big game. Every I think it's the school it's based on, the book. Okay. Yeah. It's not like the high school? Yeah. Okay. This is, a, this, is a, this is a university of Texas. Is a university oh, in Permian, you're saying? I don't know. I oh. just saw the story. It said U, right. U Texas Permian Basin. Fill me in. Oh, there must be a, yeah, there must be a school there. Okay. Like U Texas Austin. Yeah. yeah. Carla Tejas, the head coach, soccer head coach there, women's head coach, was arrested for suspicion of DUI or D- DWI. I, I, Every said, state's different, Dave. Okay, DWI. Well, so far, That's we have three the... things in common because I've coached, I've done the DUI, and I've been arrested. So, <laughs> all right, keep Perfect. going. Perfect. Well, I think we're getting <laughs> This is a... your life. Yeah, well, we do. <laughs> you might find a few parallels. After the arrest, a le- uh, supposedly a group of players anonymously uh, asked, they sent a letter to the administration officials saying, that she had done various things that were kind of out of line. She's been suspended. They've got another coach who's been filling in since then. And the university says, as they should, they said they're not commenting on an ongoing investigation. And that's all they're saying. How many DUIs does the new coach have? (laughs) Good question. But apparently the school's having a record season as well. On top of this. Yes. Their school is having a record. What kind of record? No, like police record. They've never, <laughs> they've never had a, 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 a as good a record as they have now. Okay, well, and, let me, and, and the AD was talking about that. Well, let me tell you what the letter said. They said that she wrote the players, or she asked the players for bail money for her DWI. So they're not paying her enough. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> then they said she had bullied players and was kind of a tyrant. But also, she said she kissed players in public. Okay, that's where the similarities end. No, no, no. I was going to say, we're still on. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> distributed alcohol to minors, which, okay, that one you've got in common. Uh, one player said... That was continued without a finding, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> one player said that the coach had belittled, belittled her so much in a previous season that she had considered suicide. Mm-hmm. So that's another one you get in common with her. <laughs> Luckily, the girl didn't commit suicide. My kids woman, don't. Come on, didn't stop. commit suicide. Uh, but here's the thing where I'm really disappointed by this whole story is because when I've looked at the story, kissing in public can mean so many different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if your people sometimes kiss each other and it's not romantic. So like a true voyeur, you want footage. I don't want, no, 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 Jim wants footage. (laughs) Jim wants footage. I'm just interested in what kind of kissing it is. I mean, is it that bad? Is it a Brad Marchand kissing? Ex- yeah, is it a Brad Marchand kissing? <laughs> but we're it- talking about a woman coach and, and men players. What do you mean? No, 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 female, no, no, no. Girls, no. Yeah, it's, Let's, uh, women. Oh, it's this girls. Be, they call, they call this girls women now, This to be now, wanting Jim. the take. Oh, so she, maybe she's like, you're saying, so you're saying if she kisses him on the forehead after a goal, that's nothing. But right. that is kissing in public. Yeah, like if kissing him a, on the if cheek if or whatever. If it's a win and they kiss each other on the cheek, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if she's French and she kisses him on both cheeks, I think it's okay. That's a great point. Might be cultural I mean, appropriation uh, if she doesn't. Is she a Spanish coach? Maybe that's. I knows? don't Maybe know. That's, yeah. I don't know the type of kiss, kissing, but it's the sort of thing that if you're, if you don't like this demanding coach, and you want to get her, her fired, this is the kind of thing you'll put in a letter, and people will jump to their own yeah. assumptions. But the whole idea of kissing in public. 
almost seems to me like this is not a situation where, I mean, college coaches should not be, let's say, dating, even though we might be using a euphemism. Coach, college coaches shouldn't be dating their players. So, but kissing them in public, you know, I look at it and I, I say, I would, I would want more context to know what it is, but it is the sort of thing, if I wanted to write it in a letter and I wanted to make somebody look bad, absolutely. Now, distributing alcohol to minors, wrong. I know we didn't think so when we were 17, but wrong. I know Jim didn't think so Friday when he got asked by a couple 14-year-olds. You got to loosen them up there. <laughs> <laughs> to buy him That's beer. why Barnstable's doing so well. Jim's their buyer. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, it's a fascinating little story. I don't know. It, it, it got my attention because it's a weird one. And we're seeing this more and more. I mean, our last podcast, we talked about this, but it was mainly males uh, doing yeah, And you had, you had a solution and for I it. Had which, a solution yeah. was to hire all female. Co- How'd that work out for? And that's a perfect segue yes. to our next uh, subject, the FSU update. What have we got, Paul? Well, Framingham State plays in the MASCAC, which is the college equivalent of CONCACAF. Dave, a lot, right? of, lot of kissing in that? A lot of letters. <laughs> a lot of kissing. <laughs> a lot of, there are a lot of MASCAC. I used to do the MASCAC basketball. And oh, so MASCAC. you know about the MASCAC. Oh, yeah, okay. I know the MASCAC. Oh, yeah, oh I love Salem the MASCAC. Salem State is in the MASCAC. No yeah. CONCACAF. I, I don't know no that they're con- a CONCACAF, <laughs> but I love the MASCAC. Well, we call it the CAC for short. Okay. Did you ever call it the CAC back I never the did, yeah, but it was a long time ago, and we could pronounce the longer... The longer. Anyway, go ahead. So the update, they are in first undefeated and play Worcester, who's in second this weekend. If they win that, I believe they clinch the conference. They still have one more game after that. So they should be in the playoffs, host, hopefully hosting. But Worcester is evidently pretty good. Worcester tied Salem. so I think the great thing about college soccer and high school soccer here in the Northeast is that you start in such – Beautiful weather, and <laughs> yeah. you end the season in such misery. Well, especially now, you're going to not only end it in cold, but COVID's going to come, and teams are going to get obliterated from COVID. You watch. You teams, think so? Oh, yeah. oh, this COVID's going around right now, rampant everywhere. Yeah. So even you'll though, have, even you'll though, have, even though Joe Biden said it was good. Oh, back to Joe Biden. <laughs> so you'll have games where te- good teams will be missing key players, and yep. there'll be upsets, which. Could help. Did the D three rankings come out? Was Framingham ranked at all in the Division three national rankings? Not or in the national rankings, but they do, do we have regions. Any local? Yeah, they do, do we regional have... rankings? Yeah. They have the first time in school history they were in the regional rankings back to back weeks. Nice. Yeah. And how about the student who defaced the yes. letter? We need an update. <laughs> who defaced the, the letter? Is the, is the letter? Oh, the still... only update I have on him, I was. <laughs> is I was... the letter still? In, uh, <laughs> yeah, they they did school. send a bill to Salem to pay for that. They, they sent it to did. Salem. State? I don't know if the <laughs> player ends up paying that. But they did. <laughs> the player wanted to pay it. But the update is, I was discussing this situation, and his parents said, "We know him." Our sons have played against each other for years. He was in Benfica, the club, oh, which, yeah. by the way, is Chris D's dad's old club. Okay. The, not only was he kicked out of the club, I've never heard this before, they kicked the mother out of the club, which is basically saying, if you have any offspring younger than him, we're not interested. <sighs> I've never heard that. That is great. And if you heard the good reason to go back and listen to the last podcast, right. it is a good reason to hear the story of Paul reason. and the mother and the students. <laughs> did you get? Did you try and get her onto the podcast? We need to get. I her have on to the podcast. see her again when, when if they play Salem. Again. Tell her we give her a voice that she can she All can right. uh, complain that she's been suspended. We'll give yeah. her a voice. Yeah. Give her okay. a voice. Tell her we'll give her Dale's microphone. All right. In fact, we'll I don't use it too much. In fact, <laughs> hope maybe we'll get Renix to come in at the same time. Oh, oh, speaking stiff. of Renix, so so the Revs renewed. Um, they didn't renew Captoom. He's okay. He's okay. He plays a lot. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't renew Boateng, who at one point was leading the league in minutes. Wait, per, wait. They didn't points renew per minute. Boateng, but they renewed Renix and one other guy. <laughs> no, oh, I know who it was Gonzalez. That's a, so Pete. No, they renewed Gonzalez. No, that's he was okay. awful. He was no, awful. He was not, Omar. He was not awful. Oh my gosh, he was awful. Serviceable. No, he got benched. He was. He blew two games in a row. He did. I saw the so, one. That he did. I'm not throwing training. out my opinion, no, but no, no. Twitter was on fire. The people were like, "What are we doing? Why would they? It's all money." I don't know. Yeah, maybe oh, well, Gonzalez cheap, and uh, Renix cheap are cheap, labor. and you get rid of. Bo- yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. it might also be about ceiling. They might feel that some players have a higher ceiling than others. Yeah, I didn't know they get rid of Boateng. Um, Arena bad. was not known to be making out with anyone in public, as far as I know. He would slap them on the high knee, though. 
Yeah, yeah he has he's done a quite, That's a good point. That's a big habit. He's old school. Slapping their bums. He started coaching in the 80s back when I, I was I know what I know what that <laughs> I know what that was even before he said it. Well, you do that with your kids when they leave the classroom, right, Dave? Huh? You get a little slap of the bum on the way out the door? I, I, I don't. <laughs> I do sometimes tell them, don't let the door hit you. Oh, there you go. That's anyway, different. moving on. Um, I know this about Boateng, is that uh, he's probably as good as any player on the Barnstable High School team, if not better. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh? No. 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 Transitioning right to Barnstable High yeah. School. The ranking. Let me ask you this. Does, that, does anybody in Barnstable on the team or even in the city have a name as great as Boateng? No. Okay. <laughs> Jim, have you gone to games? It's your old it's your old school. Do you it, go? It is my old school. I have not been to a game, but I got a couple of friends who still have. Ki- my kids have their friends on that team. How's the goalie? Say, the goalie is lights out. Is he? Yeah. yeah. You know they, they, have, they, have actually, they have one Brazilian player. Yeah. Who is probably averaging two to three goals a game. He's an absolute I, stud. I just have to just interrupt for a second to tell yes. Paul this. Paul, I know Jim is way too modest to share this with you, but his wait. old high school Barnstable High, what they did do is in his as a commemoration of his abilities, is, um, they've left a hole in the net. It's a Jim or Bertie hole. And it's right there in the middle of the There's going to be a hole in the chair next to me before the end of this podcast. And and what will happen is it's a black hole on the beyond the goal line. And sometimes players have gone in to, you know, to fetch balls out after a score. Mm -hmm. And they've been sucked into the black hole and they've disappeared. But there have been eligibility issues. There's also a gravestone in the net. Didn't they put a gravestone for Jim in the net? (laughs) What is this? What's what's going on here? Now, in high school, you were, you showed us, you were, you were a top high school player. Remember that day you brought all your clippings out? It says one Achilles heel. It's the PK. Just one little, little PK. The time I gave up seven goals against New Bedford. I felt like I was a tuna fisherman. I was in the net pulling the ball out every single time. It was it was embarrassing. So tell me about Barnstable. How so I am great. thrilled to talk about Barnstable because right. it's been a long, long, long time. In fact, I told you we were the only team ever to get to the semifinals in the Division One of the states, and that was back in 1985. So it's been a long time. And right now they're nine, one, and two. And nine, they, one, and two. Nine, one, and two. They were Who'd ranked they as high as. Who they lose? That's to? what we're going to get to. They lost to Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard. They lost to Martha's. They lost Vineyard. to Martha's Vineyard. And I can only attribute it to it. I find it very <laughs> sneaky, Dave. Very, very <laughs> oh, sneaky, Paul and Dave. That uh, uh, fifty migrants from Venezuela show up to Martha's Vineyard. Yep. Just in time for the Barnstable Martha's Vineyard soccer game. Yeah. And they only stayed there for 36 hours. And it just enough so time, happened two time. hours of that time was the Barnstable Martha's Vineyard soccer game in the Vineyard. What was the score? Okay. And the score was three to two. And all three goals were by new students who had just registered. That's that exactly afternoon. right, Dave. I didn't because know if you, you saw know, the clipping. You know that when these when these people come to this country from other countries, you know they're very well nourished. They've had plenty of sleep and they're in perfect condition to go to <laughs> soccer. I think the Martha's Vineyard High School coach called Texas. Yeah. And sent up, I need a striker, <laughs> I need a wing, <laughs> and I need a midi that can run. All right. You Send think them called, up here. They called Texas. I think they called Texas. They called and Texas. Abbott put them on the bus. Yep. And they were up there for the game. We'll see what happens next game because supposedly yeah. they're all gone. But nine, one, and two, I am so proud of my alma mater. They're playing great soccer. They're ranked at, uh, still in the top 15 of the state. And uh, that's D1. That's D1. Well, my alma mater, Dedham, is actually undefeated as well. Well, we lost to Martha's Vineyard, so we're not undefeated anymore. But Dedham has always had a good soccer program. Oh, Dedham had Really? Tremendous. Oh, because Needham used to. Oh, yeah, Needham's the good yeah. soccer program. Dedham sucked for a long time. So Dedham's doing well. All right. That's a yeah, big deal. And, of course, at the top is Dave's friend at St. John's. Dave's yeah, St. John's number prep. one ranked. St. John's oh, number, number one ranked. ranked. Stealing all the good a, players from around the state. He's got a good team this year. He's Recru- got a good team this year. Recruiting bastard. Oh, I know. I know. I've got to say this. Every time you bring that up, I've got to say this because I've got to go back and talk to him at some point. <laughs> you know, sometimes he's got food. And uh, But uh, I live with a guy for a couple of years. I will say this. I know he doesn't recruit because we were roommates for a long time, and I knew that once that season ended, until that season began, he didn't care at all. He put absolutely no effort into coaching that team. He didn't care about anything, not coaching, not recru- not recruiting, not coaching, not certainly not teaching. But saying really, he, doesn't... he didn't care about much except going to concerts 
and just kind of hanging out. And he didn't care about cleaning the, up the place. Yeah, no, 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 I understand he cared, about, well, you're, you're, he cared about concerts and everything like that because he would take the players he wanted to recruit to those concerts. <laughs> if you're saying he doesn't recruit is just a fancy way of saying I don't have to recruit. It, yes. The school oh, is recruiting oh, players. I, yes, it's I like a Alabama. popular so school. It's like Alabama. Mean, oh, so what you're saying is that, that parents of really good players – want their kids to go to that school because that school has a really good program with a lot of really good players. And somehow that's the school's fault. I'm not saying it's their fault, but you keep hammering the point that he doesn't recruit. I'm he doesn't you, have to. He's, he's saying he recruits. I've he, got to say this is This is my impression of Crowell of recruiting. Ready? You're the player. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You're Crowell. <laughs> yes. Ask me if I want to go to. Hey, uh, Mr. Dardizzi, would you like to play uh, soccer for us? I'm already going there. <laughs> <laughs> Try me again. I'm a different kid. You know Ready? Yes. Hey, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, how do you feel about playing for St. John's? I just got off a plane from Florida. They forced me to come up. I'm coming. To, I'm coming the next year. <laughs> oh, you just, you, you, I see. I I gotta say this, <laughs> Dale. I got the point of that. But could you follow which one was the coach and which one was the player? It was because difficult. Think, it was tough. It I don't was think tough. That they were following it. I was like, that was, on the that one was end, role play. He was playing pro, I was, I was and I was coach playing Kroll. the player. You were, I was uh, coach Kroll. Yeah, we can do one more, Jim. One sure. more. My name's Brian Ferguson. I, I'm a rich kid from Peabody. I'm the number one player in the state. Brian, uh, how would you like to come and play soccer here at uh, St. John's Prep? Coach Kroll, I'm um, already. I signed the papers last week. But I appreciate you stopping by my house. Excellent. Excellent. And do you have the time to go upstairs? <laughs> Listen, here's the two things I know about him. One is he doesn't recruit. Number two is I know that he doesn't kiss his play. Okay. All right. So I I I I think that that uh I think it goes both ways. Oh, we I definitely. I didn't. Well, that's hundred percent. If we true. learned anything in this, if we learn anything, uh, right now we, I didn't know that about Crow. What's that? You know, well, that yeah. he invites them, and he goes both ways. <laughs> They've just said that. Oh, you know. <laughs> All right, and that's one more. Okay, I just came uh, okay. downstairs from being up with Crow. <laughs> yeah. Ask me now if I'm going to that school. Paul, I'm sorry you didn't do what I asked. You can't go. <laughs> We're, oh, we'll be man. looking for another recruit. This is this is such a funny bit that's going to get edited out of the podcast. It's, well, I like just see that. I just see that as actionable. I'm, I know, Dale, you don't want to lose the seaside manner, but uh, and by manner I mean M A N O R, not not good manner. M A N N E R. Yes, the other one. All right, so there we've got it. There we've got it. So if you have a good team and you have a good program and you have great academics. According to you, Paul, you, you certainly shouldn't be sending your kid there and you shouldn't be accepting kids there. Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, I'm not. I'm what? putting the finger at the MIA. They should move these teams out. St. John's against Framingham is the equivalent of a club team against a town travel team. Now, Framingham's beaten them. Credit to them or Bonstable could beat them, but they should not be in the same bracket. Period. Well, are you saying because of the population? You're saying yeah, that you've, a got, you've, got a thousand, you've got a thousand kids at your school, a thousand boys. And you, let's say I've got a thousand kids at my school, all boys. You got a thousand at yours, half girls. Sixty. Well, no, but they break 64. it down based. That's why they have Division One, Two, Three, based on yeah, your population. Yeah. But my point is, Framingham has to pick its players from this geographical area. St. John's is getting players from seven, eight, nine, ten towns. So who are they supposed to play? BC yeah, High. And let the MIA figure it out. No, no, that's BC, not my problem. Well, no, BC a, High. The players it's, don't want to play them because they know it's not right. Yeah, there's a myriad of schools. Wait, the that, players don't want to play them. No, they don't feel Which it's ones? right. Because these if you're the, on these, Framingham, are, you, are we talking about you're entitled? If you're on Framingham, show, you have children's? maybe at best a couple club teammates on your team. Yeah. Then you go to play St. John's and you go, this is the rest of our team. <laughs> That's our club team. That's right. our club. So you're suggesting they have a public school and a private school, school league. Well, the ISL is a private school league. So figure out a way to get them in there. I don't know. Yeah. I just think that it's a problem of population. Division one population schools. I'd have to take a look at it again. But what it was before was it was the it was a gigantic range. It was a really long, uh, a really big range, and there would be some communities that would have a huge advantage. This is why in hockey they created the Elite Eight yeah. because hockey you had the same issue. They did that in football too, but you could make it into the Elite Eight as a public school, right? Depending on your oh, record, yeah. yeah, you you could get in there, but you'd go in and you'd get thrashed. No, not always. Well, most not of the always. times you would. I mean, I. I'll give you a quick example, Dave. I, I, I coached a St. Francis Preparatory School in the town of Barnstable. Small little Catholic soccer program, small little soccer program. 
And the headmaster said to me, hey, look, I know you're coaching all around the place. We want to have good sports here. Good sports brings kids in. Yep. Good sports brings kids in, brings money in. Tell me all the kids that you think would be great soccer players here. 99% of them got into the school. When wow. they came and interviewed and got in. Because Special they wanted to. And then what, we were, skills. then what did we do? We blew all the town teams away. Mm-hmm. The only team we couldn't beat was Barnstable because of the volume of kids. Right. That was the only team we couldn't beat. But the other ones we would just. And it was just like Paul said, though. They were playing against their travel kids who were at these other town teams. Right. Except there were only two travel kids on that team while I had 11. So that's, yeah, I guess it, that's it, his point. It creates a lot of issues. And they're not just competitive with, with high schools being feeling like oh, uh, they took all of our good kids. But they're, you know, I mean, this has gone back to when I was a kid. I remember my friends who would, wanted to go to St. John's Prep to play hockey. Some of them didn't make it. Mm-hmm. So they either transferred back to Beverly High or they were just unhappily at St. John's Prep. Yeah. I mean, this is, the, this is the, the reality of the student athlete now. Just like being a student athlete and your kid plays soccer, I don't want him to play soccer because he's a great track athlete or a great lacrosse player. I mean, probably a lacrosse, you're going to want him to. But but let's say, you know, I want him to be a one-sport specialized athlete. That's not fair. Well, let's put it this way. I don't, I don't want to say that's not fair. But that creates an issue in a lot of people's minds as well. Is that a good? Is that a good thing for the kid? Is it a good thing for all of us to put so much emphasis on athletics and not on the well-rounded, happy child? I mean, Paul should really think about giving his kid a hug sometime other than when the kid scores a goal. Publicly? <laughs> yeah, publicly. <laughs> not publicly. That'll get you in trouble. You'll lose your job. All right, that's it. Soccer heads New England. Boy, Dave, Paul, Jim, and Dale, thanks for tuning in.